Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Debris from a United Airlines plane falling from the sky onto Denver suburbs during an emergency landing after one of the plane's engines suffered a failure. We have the latest of what happened. A call for a checkup turns into a short pursuit with that driver finally crashing through a fence. Just ahead on GMSA, why police say that driver was on the run. Taking a look outside with live cam 48 degrees at 6 o'clock this morning. It's warming up. Sarah Spivey will give us our full forecast in just a bit. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, February 21st. Yesterday, gorgeous outside. It felt so tropical compared to the last week. Do you make it outside? Oh, of course. You know, I had to clean up my yard, which is mm -hmm. a complete mess. Um, but I took the dogs out because they needed their exercise finally after being cooped up inside. Fair. So. It was, it was beautiful. Sarah, same thing today? Yeah, we're going to be really beautiful today. We're going to see tons of sunshine, but we do have to get through a cloudy morning. So clouds have returned, and temperatures are actually 20, 25 degrees warmer than how we started off the day yesterday. So a welcome change all across the board. But as I mentioned, those clouds have returned. It's cloudy and 51 degrees at the airport. Humidity is at about 86% because the temperatures and the dew points are close to each other. So today we will watch out for some areas of patch fog in these early morning hours, but widespread dense fog is not proving to be a, a major issue this morning. 51 in Kerrville, 48 in Rock Springs, 39 in Hondo, the only location reporting in the 30s, 45 in New Braunfels, 49 in Gonzales. As I mentioned, visibility is lower in some places. We're seeing visibility down to three miles in Rock Springs, down to six out toward New Braunfels. So patchy fog will probably develop uh, throughout the rest of uh, the pre-dawn hours. And then as we head into the day, here's what we got forecast. Sarah mentioned her dogs being able to go out. A lot of those dogs have been cooped up. So here's Fido's forecast for the day. Cloudy, 55 at uh, 10. And then around noon, we'll start to see clouds break up. 62 at noon, 70 for the high temperature today. That's what we're going for, If we can, especially if we can get those skies clearing faster. In the afternoon, we'll have mostly sunny skies, 70 degrees. A beautiful day to go walk the dog and to get outside yourself. Of course, uh, you know, uh, we do have the potential for some rain in the forecast over the next seven days. So I'll have a look ahead coming up soon. Sarah Max. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Well, it was a blurry night for one woman on the city's north side. Police called out to the 3500 block of Grant Avenue just before midnight after a passerby says they saw a woman passed out on the ground. This morning, that woman now facing several charges. Our Alicia Barretta is live downtown with the latest on this investigation. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, she's charged with two crimes, possibly a third, but that's pending results. And this morning we still haven't learned her name, but here's what police say she did that led to her arrest. So it was around 1145 last night that someone spotted the woman, passed out, and they called police. EMS were the first to arrive at the location, but once that woman gained consciousness, officers say she was startled and got into her vehicle again and sped off down West Wildwood. She didn't get very far, three blocks to be exact, after she lost control of the vehicle and ended up driving through a fence and ended in the front yard of a home on the 1100 block of West Wildwood. Now that woman is charged with evading arrest and possibly a DWI. But again, that third charge we'll talk more about in the next half hour, and it has to do with the vehicle she was in. Max Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Well, homeowners who have been impacted by this week's winter storms can now apply for federal aid with the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Federal officials say those with insurance in Bear and 77 other counties must also file a claim with your insurance company before receiving aid of any kind. This comes after President Joe Biden approved Governor Abbott's request for a major disaster declaration yesterday afternoon. For more information on how and where to apply, we have all of those instructions right now on KSAT.com. Now to an update on the boil water notices this morning. Several areas in Bear County no longer required to boil their water, but just make sure that you are not in that area because a lot of people in and around San Antonio still are required. Sauce has a map highlighting the areas which no longer have that active boil water notice. It appears to be much of the north and west sides of the city. Sauce still recommends customers flush household pipes. 
They empty their ice makers and water fountains at least once before drinking or cooking. Boil notices have been lifted in Lytle and at Kennedy. If you want to know about your area and if your boil water notice has been lifted, we have the saws map with all the information right now just at thecasat.com. Now the latest update on the coronavirus pandemic here in Bear County. After a whole week without a case report, the city has released the latest numbers. There are 107 new COVID-19 cases here at home. Seven more people have died from the virus. 615 people are in local hospitals, 232 are in the ICU, and 141 are on ventilators. In your morning headlines, a terrifying close call for a Colorado suburb and passengers after a Hawaii-bound United Airlines flight suffered engine failure shortly after taking off. The plane scattered debris, including large metal parts across several neighborhoods in B Broomfield. Remarkably, the plane landed safely and no one was injured. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the details. Mayday, Mayday, United 328 Heavy, Mayday, Mayday aircraft uh, just experienced a engine failure need to turn immediately. Incredible video showing the fiery right engine of United Airlines Flight 328 after it exploded, sending pieces of metal falling to the ground in Broomfield, Colorado. The flight, with 321 passengers and 10 crew aboard, was heading to Honolulu from Denver. Passengers reported they were nearly at cruising altitude, and the captain was making an announcement when a large explosion shook the cabin, accompanied by a bright light. Experts say it was a dangerous situation. An engine failure like this at takeoff is very dangerous because the crew is now fighting on one engine to get up and away from the terrain. So they're working on flying the airplane on one engine, making sure that the fire gets out. People on the ground reported hearing a loud explosion, seeing smoke and pieces of metal falling from the sky. A large circular piece of metal that appears to be part of the engine casing can be seen in the front yard of this home. Debris pierced the roof of one home and landed in the kitchen. The FAA says the plane, quote, returned to Denver International Airport and landed safely. The passengers deplaned and were bused to the terminal. Officials say they're amazed no one was hurt on the ground. And that was ABC's Karina Mitchell reporting 607, 48 degrees out. Well, new moms recover from their C-sections. Who should hold the baby? We have some answers still ahead in today's Medical Minute. And Norwegian Cruise Lines canceling all of their trips. We explain why and until when next on GMSA. Take a look outside with live cam, 48 degrees, much warmer this morning than what we've been seeing earlier this week. Sarah Spivey will let us know how much it will warm up today when we come back. In your morning headlines, California authorities are investigating abuse allegations against rock star Marilyn Manson. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department confirmed the investigation Friday. The Special Victims Bureau is looking into alleged incidents happening between 2009 and 2011. Two former girlfriends, actresses Evan Rachel Wood and Esme Bianco, have publicly accused Manson of sexual and physical abuse after Wood's allegations he was dropped from his record label. And former President Donald Trump scheduled to speak at the next Sunday's Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC, in Orlando. Now, a source says Donald Trump will, quote, be talking about the future of the Republican Party and the conservative movement, end quote. Former President Trump also expected to comment on the Biden administration's amnesty and border policies. Former Vice President Mike Pence was invited to speak at CPAC, but he declined. Norwegian Cruise Line announcing that its voluntary suspension of cruises will now go through the end of May due to the pandemic. Prior to the company's statement, cruises had been canceled through April 30th. Norwegian says it will continue to work with the government and public health authorities to protect its customers, crew, and communities visited. Guests who are currently booked on canceled voyages are asked to contact their travel advisor or the cruise line for more information. All right, well, back here at home, 48 degrees yep. to start the day. Sarah Spivey, I got to say, this 
Walking outside this morning felt fantastic. It really did, and it's funny how quickly our bodies have acclimated to the cold. Yesterday, you know, our high temperature was only 60 degrees, and uh, normally I would probably be wearing a sweater or something Same. if the high temperature was 60 degrees. But I went outside, short sleeves, and I was in hey, enjoying. Go wild. Exactly. <laughs> now, this morning we are a lot warmer than yesterday morning. In fact, it's our first morning in San Antonio above freezing since February 13th. Wow, really, really uh, nice change of pace here. 51 degrees, those clouds out there are acting like a blanket to keep in the heat, and that's why we're seeing temperatures a little bit warmer uh, than uh, over the last couple of mornings, significantly warmer than the last couple of mornings. South winds at about 10 miles per hour today. Those winds will be breezy at times from the south, gusting up to about 25 miles per hour, so keep that in mind. It will be a breezy day, and although the first part of the day will be gray, you'll be reaching for the sunglasses in the afternoon. Let's take a look at some of these Nice morning temperatures, 51 in Kerrville, 51 in Kerrville, 50 in Bandera, 46 Rio Medina. Hondo right now is the only site that's reporting in the 30s, upper 30s, 43 at Simpson, 45 in New Braunfels, 41 in Pleasanton, 51 in Canyon Lake. Canyon Lake received a lot of ice over the last week. 43 in Creaser Springs, 43 in Kennedy, 47 in LaGrange. Now, I want you to pay attention to this map. Watch this. Boom. Temperatures are 20 to 30 degrees warmer than how we started off the day yesterday. Look at Kerrville, 29 degrees warmer than their morning low yesterday. In San Antonio, 25 degrees warmer than our morning low yesterday. We are seeing some areas of patchy fog out there. Visibility is down to six miles in New Braunfels, down to three in Rock Springs, down to seven in Pleasanton and Carrizo Springs. And over the next hour, we could see fog thicken up just a little bit, but dense fog is starting to not be a concern this morning. Uh, just the gray skies for us. But watch this as I take you through the future cast. We are expected to see skies clear after lunch around San Antonio. It'll stay pretty cloudy out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and Uvalde through this afternoon, uh, through lunch rather. But by the afternoon, all of us will be seeing sunshine, a little bit more cloud cover, and potentially even some sprinkles out to the east toward Gonzales, uh, Beeville, and Victoria. Today's high temperatures are going to be very pleasant. I mentioned that the cloud cover is going to stick around a little bit longer for uh, Uvalde. Valley Eagle Pass and Del Rio. They'll be in the mid to upper 60s today. Mid 60s up in the hill country near Kerrville, but close to 70 degrees along that I-35 corridor, even 75 down near Laredo. So here's how our forecast for today looks in San Antonio. Cloudy at 10, 55 degrees. We're going to see our skies clear right around noon, and then temperatures are going to shoot up. We'll be looking at a warm and sunny afternoon, 70 degrees. Again, southwest winds today, breezy at times, 10 to 15, gusting up to 25. And and then a mild evening as a weak cool front is going to approach. So let me show you on the satellite and radar what's going on right now. Snowfall around uh, Nebraska and Iowa around that low pressure system. Don't worry, no snowfall for us over the next several days. Uh, we're going to have that cold front move through in the overnight hours. And as we see skies clear in the afternoon, by about midnight, we'll have some passing clouds. Notice that the rain chances really are pretty much non existent here in San Antonio. We might see a sprinkle around midnight, but better rain chances east toward Houston along that front. Then, as that front moves through tomorrow morning, uh, the only areas that I'm concerned about seeing a freeze tomorrow morning are the extreme northern hill country, so uh, near Fredericksburg, north of Kerrville. Uh, around the hill country, temperatures tomorrow morning will be in the mid 30s. We'll be near 40 here in San Antonio, near 50 along the coastal plain. And then it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow, too. Total sunshine and near 70 degrees for the high temperature tomorrow, too. Let's go ahead and take you through the rest of the forecast, though. Uh, once again, on Tuesday morning, we'll be above freezing here in San Antonio, but the hill country may briefly touch freezing on Tuesday morning. And then we'll be at 74 on Wednesday with the approach of another weak cool front. That'll move through on Thursday, bringing us a chance for isolated showers and storms and then look at that weekend looks like a good weekend ahead for us next weekend with temperatures in the 60s and near 70 degrees so a nice welcome change as a lot of people are unfortunately having to make costly repairs on their homes uh, from from water issues and pipes bursting from the hard freeze this past week. we've all been talking about it hey did you find this at home depot right. how was Lowe's right. or they're sold out so hang in there guys absolutely all right 617 48 degrees out an endangered ferret might not be endangered anymore. Oh, look at its face in the future, in the near future, the scientific reason ahead. 
Plus, next on GMSA, details on a new study that shows how important dad's role could be the days after a baby is born. Let's take a look out. Uh, look, no, we're not looking outside. We're looking at lottery <laughs> numbers. Pick three, eight, seven, six, fireball four, daily four, one, nine, two, eight, fireball zero. Cash five, two, six, 26, 30, 34, Lotto, Texas, three, eight, 10, 11, 21, 40. And your Powerball, 4, 8, 22, 32, 58, Powerball, 4, Power Play, 10. Good luck. We'll be right back. As new moms recover from their C-sections, who should hold the baby? A new study suggests that shirtless dads may play an important role. With more, here's ABC News' Alex Perche. A mother cuddling with her baby after birth is one of the most natural human moments. In fact, Holding a newborn can even improve the baby's health. But when mom is recovering from a C-section surgery, who should take her place? A new study shows just how important dads are. Researchers at the Chilean Ministry of Health and the Swedish Karolinska Institute found babies born by C-section who are held by their dads in the skin-to-skin -skin technique may have improved health outcomes in the first few hours of life. They found that newborns had higher and more stable heart rates just after birth if they were snuggled unswaddled and against a dad's bare chest. Although this study was small, there are very few risks to cuddling closely with your baby. And when moms are recovering from surgery, dads can certainly step into this important role. With this Medical Minute, I'm Alex Perche, ABC News. Time now is 622, 48 degrees out. Scientists are hoping to help a ferret not be an endangered species anymore. What they are planning to do, that's next. Good morning and welcome back. We're talking a little science news today. Scientists cloning a black-footed ferret that, get this, died more than 30 years ago. Wild. She was born in December in a Colorado lab. Here's a photo of Elizabeth Ann. Scientists say it's the first time a U.S. endangered species has been cloned. Elizabeth Ann's genes are a replica of a ferret named Willa, who died in 1988. The remains were frozen. So in 2013, the Fish and Wildlife Service partnered with several organizations to explore the biotechnology of ferrets. Now, researchers now want to breed Elizabeth Ann and release her offspring into the wild. They hope it will introduce genetic diversity into the ferret population. I don't want to, you know, go into conspiracy theories. Is this how Jurassic Park started? I don't know, but the, the dinosaurs were not that cute. It's a, it's so cute. It all starts with a ferret. <laughs> 626, 48 degrees out. Well, McDonald's linked executive pay to diversity targets. More details on what is McDonald's plan. That's ahead in our next half hour. And the state still struggling from that vicious winter storm, but some assistance is on the way as President Joe Biden partially approved the major disaster declaration. We have the latest next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. 6.30 this morning, February 21st. Thank you so much for starting your day with us yesterday. Gorgeous. Sarah Spivey, every morning a little behind the scenes, she does her little web thing and she just confirmed sunny Sunday ahead. Sunny yeah, in Sunday. the afternoon, it's gonna start off cloudy. It is starting off cloudy, uh, but we will see the sun in the afternoon. I was out and about doing a couple of errands yesterday and you could see people were out in droves trying to soak up the beautiful weather. So if you are somebody who wants to take a walk today outside, here's a look at your river walk and park forecast. It's going to be a beautiful day in the afternoon though. That's when we're going to see the sun. It'll be pretty cloudy to start off the day. We're currently at about 50 degrees at the airport at 10 will be cloudy 55 around noon. Skies will start to clear. It'll be sunny and warm this afternoon near 70 degrees southwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour in a pretty mild evening which is nice given the fact that the last several evenings have been very very cold so outside right now as i mentioned it's cloudy it's 51 degrees we're trying to get the issue resolved here where the bug at the bottom of the screen doesn't really match the temperature at the airport just to give you some behind the scenes but we're going to try to fix that it is seven it is 51 degrees outside with south winds at 10 miles per hour absolutely no problems on the roads if you are out in 
and about. All the roads have been opened and the bridges and overpasses have been opened as well. 51 in Kerrville, 45 in New Braunfels, 49 in Gonzales, 41 in Pleasanton. Just 24 hours ago, we were seeing temperatures in the 20s around San Antonio and the KSAT 12 viewing area. So temperatures much warmer, a lot nicer out there this morning. There are, however, some areas of patchy fog. Visibility is down to six miles in New Braunfels, down to seven in Hondo. I wouldn't be surprised if you find some fog in the hills and valleys uh, around San Antonio and across the hill country, too. So we will have to get through this gray morning, but as I mentioned in the afternoon, it's going to be nice and sunny, and the week ahead looks good, too, with even a chance for a rain or two. So I'll have a look ahead coming up in just a bit. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. New this morning on the city's north side, a call for a checkup ends in a short chase and the driver crashing through a fence. Authorities say they found a woman in the 3500 block of Grant Avenue just before midnight, but she ran off as soon as she could. Arlicia Barrera is live downtown with more on why that woman is now under arrest and charged with multiple crimes. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, it wasn't until later that police realized exactly why this woman was on the run. She was driving a stolen vehicle, and here's what actually led to that arrest. So someone called police around 1145, and they called, and police were actually, excuse me, EMS were the first to arrive at the location. But once that woman gained consciousness, officers say she was startled and got into her vehicle and sped off down West Wildwood Road. She didn't get very far. She only got about three blocks down, and that's because police say she lost control of the vehicle and drove through a fence, ending up in the front yard of a home on the 1100 block of West Wildwood. That's when police ran the license plate and confirmed that vehicle was stolen. The woman had minor injuries but didn't have to be taken to the hospital. Instead, she was evaluated for DWI and was arrested at the scene. So this morning, we haven't learned her name, but we do know that she's facing several charges, including uh, evading arrest, possession of a stolen vehicle, and a third charge is pending. Again, that's the DWI charge, and that's pending those test results. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Now to the latest in the pandemic across the country, the United States now with more than 100,000 new cases registered in just the last 24 hours. All of this according to Johns Hopkins University. Country health officials also reporting nearly 2,100 more people have died because of this virus. The United States has a total of more than 28.07 million cases. 497,568 people have died from the virus as of late last night. Well, Texas is getting nearly 6,000 first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine for next week. The vaccines will be shipped to 563 providers in 230 counties across the state, including more than 84,000 doses for large vaccine clinics in Harris, Dallas, and Tarrant counties. The state will also order about 360,000 to be used as second doses for people who have already been vaccinated, especially those appointments that were delayed by the winter storm. And speaking of that winter storm, we know so many families in and around San Antonio across Texas dealing with the aftermath, and that means plumbing, that means architecture, that means so much for so many. But now a little bit of relief after that brutal storm blanketed so much of the state. Temperatures well above freezing Saturday, but many households are still without basic necessities they lost during this unprecedented blast. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Millions of Texas residents attempting to cope with the aftermath of this week's deadly winter storms. We started harvesting snow because we had also lost water at that point, um, harvesting snow for toilet water. State officials say more than 15 million people had water service disruptions as of Saturday, likely due to pipes broken from the frigid temperatures over the past few days. This is a community of people that are scared and upset and, and angry. Uh, we're eventually going to need some better answers to uh, why we're here and how we prevent it from ever happening again. Uh, but for right now, we're just trying to get water, water to our neighbors. Tony Anderson says her husband, Andy, a Vietnam veteran, died after the power went out and his oxygen machine couldn't operate. We just thought the power would get back on. We didn't know the power was going to be out for days like it was. Some assistance is coming from outside of the Lone Star State. When disaster strikes, this is not just an issue for Texans. This is an issue for our entire country. 
Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and others in the House raised funds for the state, and President Joe Biden approved a major disaster declaration for Texas Friday. Governor Greg Abbott thanked the president in a statement, adding Texas is working with federal partners to bring the state additional relief. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, forecasters say Texas will get a weak cold front tonight, but the impact is expected to be relatively minimal. And CPS Energy went from having thousands of customers without power to having less than 50 by late last night, something the CEO says was not cheap to do. Many customers now concerned about the future and their bills. The CEO of CPS, Paula Gold Williams, apologizing for the power outage during the press conference yesterday. However, she says the costs behind getting the power back will impact Texas overall. I have forecasted from the very beginning that these financial pressures on the utility industry are going to be our next tsunami. I do, again, want our community to know we're going to use every single tool we can to mitigate that. Gold Williams didn't say just yet how they hope to mitigate those potential costs. She says she hopes to have an estimate of what CPS customers' bills will look like during after costs have been factored in. And for those still in need of water, the city of Bear County, I'm sorry, the city of San Antonio and Bear County and the San Antonio Food Bank teamed up to open bottled water distribution sites. Some of the locations are on your screen. Distributions are open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and will remain open for at least two weeks. Saws and other independent businesses also have water dis distribution sites open. We have all that on KSAT.com. And we do know so many people still dealing with a low water pressure, broken pipes, leaks, huge problem around the county. We also know a boil notice is still active for so many families, but we still have so many questions about how long that's going to last, how much it's going to cost, and then what comes next. That is why the president and CEO of SAWS is going to be joining us on Leading SA today at 8 a.m. If you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. And then at 8.30, we're going to have a master plumber on. Give us some tutorials on some of the quick fixes that local families can use. All right, time now is 638, 48 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA. Demi Lovato releasing the trailer of her upcoming documentary. The details ahead. And McDonald's working to overhaul its workplace culture. How they plan to do it next. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 48 degrees. Sarah Spivey says, yes, things are warming up. She will have our full forecast when we come back. In your morning consumer news, McDonald's announcing it's planning to tie executive pay to diversity goals. One of those goals includes increasing the percentage of women in senior director and above roles from 37 percent to 45 percent by the end of 2025. Another goal aims at increasing underrepresented groups in those higher level positions from 29 percent to 35 percent. And Mazda, the top of the list this year in terms of best vehicles, it's voted on. Consumer Reports named Mazda best overall, best overall mainstream, and best reliability. The automaker Mazda beat out more expensive brands. They beat out BMW, Porsche, and Lexus. Honda actually showed the most improvement on the list. That went up 10 spots. They are now in the top five. Experts say Honda scored big because of the improved reliability. And, you know, it was really nice having a four-wheel drive car that I never get yes. to use. But, I mean, it really came in handy when the weather got pretty dangerous. And, yeah. Sarah, and Sarah, hopefully, I mean, we're, we're done well, for now. Well, we're done, we're done for now. Speaking of vehicles, I had a tiny little chip in my window that I wanted mm. to fix. But the extreme cold made it Okay, crack, is that so why I have a huge crack in my window now? Probably. I noticed it yesterday. I know. And so, again, costly repairs, unfortunately... A lot of us are going to be making over the next uh, few days, potentially a few weeks, with the plumbing issues, too. I'm looking forward to hearing at 8.30 what the master plumber has to say about the DIY fixes and, and how to get things fixed around your house. For now, though, the weather will not be an issue over the next few days, which is very welcome news. It's 51 degrees outside. It is cloudy out there. Clouds have moved their way in, but clouds are good in the morning for keeping in the warmth from yesterday. And... Uh, 
again, a massive change in, in the last 24 hours. Yesterday morning, we were in the 20s. Now we're at 51 south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Today we'll see gusts up to 25 miles per hour from the south and from the west. With this morning's low well below freezing, we are finally beating a freeze streak. This is a look at low temperatures at the airport. We've been below freezing in the morning since Friday the 12th of February with even longer in the hill country, of course. And again, our record cold of nine degrees right there on Monday morning after the snow fell. So this this morning's temperature of 51 degrees breaks that streak and we're finally able to really, really thaw out even in the morning hours. It's also 51 in Kerrville too, 46 in Rock Springs. The only area on the map that's reporting in the 30s is Hondo, 39 degrees, uh, Carrizo Springs at 41. Of course, we're still missing uh, uh, sites from Del Rio and Yavali just because of the deep freeze and the communication issues out there. Uh, meanwhile, we do have some areas of patchy fog out to the west. Visibility is down to two miles in Hondo, down to four in Carrizo Springs, down to five in Pleasanton. Around San Antonio, you might see some fog in the valleys around Bear County and visibility down to three miles in Rock Springs. Another significant change and uptick is uh, the difference of dew points. Dew points are in the 40s, which is dry, but it's a lot uh, more uh, moist than it was a couple days ago, and that's why we're seeing clouds develop out there this morning. Uh, but into the afternoon, those clouds are going to clear right around lunch for us in San Antonio. But look out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Valley. Those clouds will be a bit more stubborn out there. Uh, but by the afternoon, generally all of us will be experiencing sunshine, a little bit cloudier out toward the coastal plains. High temperatures are going to respond to that sun. We'll be looking along the I-35 corridor at a high temperature near 7. 70 degrees uh, with even warmer uh, out toward Laredo. Uh, out toward the west, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Valley, a couple degrees cooler than us in San Antonio because those clouds will stick around a bit longer. And in the higher elevations, high temperature uh, closer to 65. So today, morning clouds, afternoon sun will be at 55 at 10. That's when we'll see sun uh, so clouds. But as soon as that sun comes up, our temperatures are going to spike and we'll be at 70 degrees in the afternoon. Reminder, it will be breezy today. Southwest winds at 10 to 15 gusting up to 25. Notice how in the evening we don't really cool down too much. We'll still be at 55 at 10 and I do have a 10% chance for a sprinkle or two at 10 p.m. and I'll show you why. We have a weak cool front on the way. The key word there being a weak cool front. Uh, we are not going to see an Arctic blast from this front at all. Instead what we're going to be looking at is right at about midnight that front will move through uh, and it'll allow for a few showers out east toward Houston potentially even out toward Gonzales but just a sprinkle or two around San Antonio and then we'll see clear skies to to start the day tomorrow. Now I want to alert some folks in the hill country that your forecast morning low tomorrow is going to be in the mid 30s. There might be some areas that briefly touch freezing tomorrow morning, uh, but the rest of us are going to be well above freezing around San Antonio and across the coastal plain. And then tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day with a high temperature near 70 degrees. Once again, looking ahead, we do have a chance for rainfall on Thursday, isolated showers, maybe a storm possible on Thursday uh, before we see another week cool front move through before the weekend. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now is 647, 48 degrees out. Well, a documentary of a struggling singer with addiction next on GMSA, a preview of Demi Lovato's new documentary. And taking a look out at the roadways, 151 and 410. There's 410 and Rolling Ridge. Everything seems to be clear out there, but if anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. Take a, a look at these lotto numbers before we leave. Pick three, eight, seven, six, fireball four, daily four, one, nine, two, eight, fireball zero. And your cash five, two, six, 26, 30, 34, lotto Texas, three, eight, 10, 11, 21, 40, and powerball four, eight, 22, 32, 58, powerball four, power play 10. Good luck. We'll be right back. In entertainment news, a troubled singer, a series that's a perfect match, and an award season tidbit. That's right. CNN's David Daniel has it all in today's Hollywood Minute. Demi's good at making you believe that she's okay. Demi is very good at hiding what she needs to hide. I crossed a line that I had never crossed. Are we talking about heroin? Are we doing that? Demi Lovato talks about her turbulent life in Dancing with the Devil. 
In the first trailer for the four-part documentary, the pop star reveals she had three strokes and a heart attack after her 2018 near-fatal overdose. Family, friends, Elton John and Christina Aguilera also appear in the doc, which opens the South by Southwest Film Festival next month and debuts on YouTube March 23rd. It's amazing. Here's a match, Tim Burton and Wednesday Adams. The director known for creepy and kooky films is set to direct a Netflix live action series described as a supernaturally infused mystery centered on the Adams daughter. No word who will play Wednesday. Zendaya is this year's recipient of the See Her Award from the Critics' Choice Association. The See Her movement is dedicated to pushing boundaries, defying stereotypes, and portraying women and girls as they really are. Zendaya will be honored March 7th at the 26th Annual Critics' Choice Awards, where she's also nominated for Best Actress Honors for Malcolm and Marie. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And also in Hollywood, a new trailer for Disney's Cruella showing Emma Stone in the young version of the 101 Dalmatians villain in her origin story. This looks so good. The film takes place in the 1970s London where fashion designer Estella DeVille becomes obsessed with dog skins. Mm. The trailer's dark tone suggests Cruella will be just as evil this time around. And Glenn Close serves as the executive director. She actually portrayed Cruella DeVille in the 1996 live action version of 101 Dalmatians, the film and its 2002 sequel. Cruella is scheduled to hit theaters May 28th. A few points. One, love Emma Stone. Two, I really want to see that. Which one? Cruella. Yes, of course. Looks good. I don't know. He's I know you're not a Disney Plus. I'm not a Disney Plus, but this looks like I'll good. watch anything on Disney Plus. 653, 48 degrees out. We'll be right back. Passed out in the middle of the road. That's how police discovered a woman around 1145 last night after a passerby called 911. The investigation began on the 3500 block of Grand Avenue, where police say the woman appeared to be intoxicated. And once EMS was able to help her regain consciousness, the woman got into her vehicle and sped off. She only made it about three blocks down after she drove through a fence and ended up in someone's front yard off of West Wildwood. That's where police discovered the vehicle was actually stolen. We don't know the woman's name, but we know that she is charged with evading arrest, possession of a stolen vehicle, and there is a third charge pending. That's a DWI, but police are waiting to get those test results back. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA emergency landing, a Boeing 777 experiencing engine failure shortly after takeoff. Debris falling on neighborhoods in the Denver area. What we're learning this morning about what exactly went wrong here. Plus millions in Texas without drinkable water and in Jackson, Mississippi, the mayor there is saying there's no definitive time frame for when the taps can safely be turned back on. And finally, the extreme winter weather has delayed vaccine distribution this week. How shipping companies are working to catch up. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. And again, for the first morning since February 12th, we are above freezing 51 degrees for this morning's temperature 47 in New Braunfels, 51 in Kerrville, 39 in Hondo, 41 in Carrizo Springs, 46 in Rock Springs. A closer view around San Antonio is 41 at Stinson, 47 in New Braunfels, 40 in Pleasanton, 44 in Rio Medina, 40, 53 rather in Comfort and 50 at Bernie Stage. In some of the cooler areas, we do have patchy fog developing. So out toward New Braunfels, down towards Stinson down toward Hondo uh, and Pleasanton seeing some patchy fog. So if you have to get somewhere this morning, know that that's going to be an issue. But by the afternoon, sunny and 70 degrees south winds at 10 to 15 gusting up to 25 a week cool front moves through tonight and no freeze forecast in san antonio over the next seven days uh, with the chance for some rain on thursday look at that on wednesday we'll be up to 74 what a difference wow. 24 hour makes 51 versus 26. it's nice yeah well, thank you, Sarah and Max. Coming up at eight in our leading essay segment, I, we have two very important guests. One is going to be with Saws, the other a master plumber. So many people scrambling to fix broken pipes and yeah. leaks. Right. We know that the boil notice is still in and around Bear County. A lot of people still under that for right now. So we do have the Saws president and CEO, Robert Puente, coming on at 8 a.m. And then we know a lot of people as well as the boil notice and the pipes. Well, 
a lot of busted pipes, a lot of people yeah. dealing with all the plumbing issues. So at 8.30, we have a master plumber, Brad Harrell. He is coming on. So we're going to be discussing some easy do-it-yourself fixes for right now. Talk about some of the biggest things he's doing. And one of the questions I'm really excited, what not to do. And on top of all of this, we're also going to check in with Alicia Brer. We know a lot of people need clean water. We need drinking, drinking water. water. Yeah. And there is a water bottle distribution going on around the city today. We're going to check in with Alicia Brer live. So she's going to be there. We're going to take an hour long break from Good Morning America, but don't worry. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. We're going to talk about it all. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right water now. bottle distribution. Water bottle distributions continue throughout the city of San Antonio, and there's a high demand for the resource. And the city simply says they need help. Just ahead on GMSA, how and when to register to volunteer. Plus, we're talking water bills, boil water notices, and the reason for the water issues here in San Antonio. The president and CEO of SAWS is joining us for a live interview in our leading essay segment. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, there is the sun there, 47 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, February 21st. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Sarah Costa, 47 feels tropical at this point. I know. It's like we, we've we been conditioned to this such cold. I walked out in just a light fleece, and I was like, I don't need my heavy winter coat anymore. Like, I used to be dramatic at 48 degrees. Sarah, look what this did to us. I know. It really did help condition us to the colder weather for sure. Thank goodness, though, we won't have to deal with extreme cold anytime soon around San Antonio. In fact, outside right now, our morning temperature at the airport is 50 degrees. Now, as you saw in that live camp, Camera there. The clouds above us are pretty thin. They're going to burn off pretty quickly and we're going to be left with total sunshine in the afternoon. That'll allow for a warm and comfortable afternoon. So temperatures this morning generally in the 40s or near 50 degrees up in Kerrville 51 degrees, 54 in Comfort, 50 in Bandera. They had a little bit more cloud cover up in the hill country and that's why they're a little warmer from the overnight hours. Meanwhile, down at Stinson, it's 41, 43 in Pleasanton. Something to keep in mind though is that there are areas of patchy fog out there a visibility down to three miles in Hondo down to six in New Braunfels but we are seeing that fog improve in that uh, it's starting to dissipate visibility in Hondo was just down to about half a mile a little while ago so we're seeing that uh, fog clear out and it's going to be a great day this forecast is uh, going out to Sarah Costa and her dogs Scooby and sister <laughs> if you want to take your dog for a walk today uh, it's going to be great. At 10, we'll still be pretty cloudy, but at noon, we'll be seeing skies clear. A high temperature near 70 degrees. I know our pups and us were cooped up inside for a while uh, thanks to the cold weather, but today's going to be a great day to enjoy some time outdoors. We do have rain chances in the forecast in the week ahead, so coming up, I'll have a look at that. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. And your top stories this morning, a woman behind bars after San Antonio police tell us that she crashed and then left the scene all in a stolen vehicle. So this was the scene. Police tell us the woman was down and out in the 3500 block of Grant Avenue a little before midnight. When EMS arrived, she actually got scared, jumped into the car, drove off quickly. She lost control about three blocks down on West Wildwood. She drove through a fence. Finally, she was arrested by police. They ran the license plate, found out that the vehicle was stolen. That woman now facing multiple charges, including evading arrest, possession of a stolen vehicle and possible DWI. Well, also in your top stories, one man is behind bars after police say he threatened people over $20. According to an arrest affidavit, 34 year old Christopher Payne threatened to kill the two people at a hotel with a baseball bat and a rifle in hand last month. The victims told police Payne was swinging the bat around at them. Payne admitted he talked to the victims while holding the bat, but that he never threatened them. The owner of the hotel was contacted and said that Payne had been renting a room for six months. And during that time, he threatened most staff members, guests and had been seen and had seen an AK-47 in Payne's room. He is currently being held on a $50,000 bond. Now to the aftermath of the storm. Several areas in and around San Antonio no longer required to boil the water. Most of the areas in the clear appear to be much of the north and west sides of town. If you look on your screen right now, that is the green portion of the map. Saws still recommends customers flush household pipes, ice makers, and water fountains at least once before using them for drinking or cooking. 
Boil notices have also been lifted for the cities of Lytle and Kennedy. You can find this map from SAWS highlighting the areas which no longer have the active boil notices. Right now, just head to KSAT.com. And speaking of the boil notices, although weather conditions have improved, a lot of people still having a tough time finding water for their families. The city of San Antonio, Bear County and the San Antonio Food Bank have teamed up to open more than 15 bottled water distribution sites that will remain open for the next two weeks. That's right. Alicia Barrett joining us live from the parking lot of the AT&T Center that is now serving as a hydration station. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, people can start making their way across all of these locations here at the AT&T Center. Bear County Public Works employees already working hard, so we want to thank them for their work. Again, they'll be open until 5 p.m. today. Not much of a line, honestly, here at this location. They opened at 8, so just a few minutes ago. There are plenty of areas to choose from across the city, including Texas A&M University, San Antonio, main campus on the south side, Six Flags. Our Lady Lake University on the west side is also a pickup point, as well as Rolling Oaks and City of Converse Community Center. And those are just to name a few, you guys. Again, I believe I counted 16 total. According to the city, residents will be able to receive one case of bottled water per day per household, and they'll be here each day until supplies last. They are expecting a large demand, so in order to avoid those long wait lines, they need volunteers. If you have any available time today, know that shifts are available beginning tomorrow, February 22nd, until fr Friday, February 26th. That's from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And two very important things to note, if this does interest you, you'll be outdoors and carrying these cases to people's vehicles. So you want to be able to lift at least 20 pounds with no issue. There are several options. If you head over to ksat.com, we have an article with not just these locations, but other businesses that are helping out throughout town and also that very important link on how to register for here. So for the AT&T Center, we know it can get a little confusing sometimes. So if you're going to be headed to this area, Gate G, Lot 7 off of AT&T Parkway is your best bet to get here. That way you can get your case of water. We're reporting live, Alicia Barrera, Pesa, 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, speaking of the water situation here in town, several of our local breweries have stopped regular production and stepped up to help the community. The water needed for making a batch of beer now serving a different purpose. Blue Star, which was unaffected by the winter storm, decided to pause their beer crafting labs and provide some quality water to those in need. This effort is a direct response to the growing need in the community following this week's historic winter storm. And yes, the water is safe to drink and complies with the boil water notices. People bring their own container, they can come here and we'll fill it up for them, no charge. And we also have some small containers that they can purchase and we'll fill up and they can take it with them. If you are in need of drinkable water, Blue Star Brewery will be distributing water starting back up tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. through 10 p.m. Alamo Brew Company, along with several other local breweries, have also joined in on this effort. You can find their hours and pick up at ksat.com. Clearly still a lot of people, a lot of families with no water, low water pressure and without the availability of drinkable water. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is the president and CEO of the San Antonio Water System, Robert Puente. Good morning. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, we've discussed it before, but for anyone who may have missed it this past week, can you explain the reasons for why so many people were without water? Uh, Quite simply, if you don't have power to move water, it's uh, not going to happen. You saw those individuals uh, in your prior stories carrying water. Water is very, very heavy, and a tremendous amount of power is needed to move that water into the neighborhood. So during the blackouts, our pump stations would go out, inability to move that water. And a lot of people losing water from busted pipes or having to run their faucets for, you know, three to four days straight. So what will this past week mean for people's future water bills? Uh, we have decided that the lower of the two months that were affected by this is what, what you will pay. So for the majority of these individuals that have lost water through broken pipes, uh, it will not uh, affect them at all, other than their normal water bill that they've always been accustomed to paying. Now, there's still a lot of people under the boil water notice, and when you do boil your water, there's actually some residue that pops up. Can you explain what people should be on the lookout for? 
that that is our beautiful Edwards water with calcium. It's not harmful. Uh, it's uh, there. It's just manifesting itself because of the boiling of the water. It's and not harmful. And so, Go can ahead. you explain what the the purpose of the water boil notice is? In uh, we had a low pressure because of the um, of the of the blackouts. Uh, the water pressure started going down. All the leaks throughout the city where water was escaping our system. We are happy to say that none of our uh, lines broke. We had no broken lines because of uh, freezing weather, and so our system stayed uh, intact. Uh, there was no breaks where contaminants could come in, but the low pressure required under TCQ guidelines, state guidelines, that you had had to issue a boil water notice. So this was a precautionary measure. We had to do it, as you mentioned, with that first uh, picture. The majority of the city is out. I'm happy to report that this morning before noon, uh, other huge sections of the city will be out of the boil water notice. And, you know, we just showed that map earlier. There are a lot of people do have their water back, but they and they they're out of that boil notice. But for the people that aren't, what does that timeline look like? Uh, throughout the city, there is like a little polka dots of areas that still do not have water. For example, if you're in the Dominion at the highest point, uh, you probably still don't have water, or they're no, far, far northwest, uh, Anaco Springs, just a, a few roads there you don't have water. Uh, the rest of the city uh, has water, maybe one isolated uh, situation. We're having problems with apartment complexes because the managers are shutting off the water uh, out in the streets uh, uh, and, and causing problems. Oh, those kinds of problems are occurring, but they're not weather related anymore. It's just an inability to, to get everybody online uh, and, and doing the proper things. Thank you very much, sir. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey here with a question about the aquifer and saws pumping the water from the aquifer. I noticed that the aquifer itself has gone down 10 plus feet uh, just within the last couple of days. Do you know how that's going to affect uh, stage one water restrictions if we're going to have to go back into that and even into the drier months of the year? Is this going to have effect on our water supply for months to come? Well, there's a couple of questions in there. It will not have an effect on our water supply because we still have, other than the Edwards, we have eight other sources of water. So uh, San Antonio, even if it's a hot, hot, dry summer, we'll have plenty of water. The restrictions, however, because of the aquifer and it's gone down, and these are the thousands and thousands of uh, leaky pipes throughout the city, has gone down. So you might see uh, us still in stage one restrictions. Uh, we are we are using more water on an individual day during this calamity than we were using on any individual day in the heat of the sun. Fantastic. And just one quick question before we let you go. Uh, you mentioned the timeline in terms of getting everyone's water back up. What about a timeline for that boil notice for those who are still on the map? Uh, by this morning, 1043 actually is the passage of the 24-hour time period. So you will see the lifting of the other huge swath of, of the city before noon. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And anyone who missed any part of this, you can find it all online, ksat.com. Thank you, Mr. Puente. Thank you. Thank you. And if you were impacted by the winter storm, we want to let you know that you can apply for federal assistance. If you have insurance and are applying for disaster assistance, you must also file a claim with your insurance company as soon as possible. By law, FEMA cannot duplicate benefits for losses covered by insurance. If insurance does not cover all of your damages, you may be eligible to receive federal assistance. You can find out so much more info right now. Just head to ksat.com. And it's time now, 813, 48 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, Mayor Ron Nuremberg lends a helping hand to people who needed a nice hot meal. How he was able to put the San Antonio special together. And actually, we just spoke to Robert Puente. He did exactly the same thing. The mayor gave out 1,000 tacos. Puente gave out 1,001. Look at everyone coming together. Plus, two fake grandmas getting the boot while these Florida women put on phony costumes. And next, helping fill the need for blood in the Alamo City, when you can sign up to save lives and how. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 48 degrees, only going to get warmer and sunnier throughout the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments.
Good morning and welcome back. University Health rescheduling the upcoming KSAC Community Blood Drive because of the weather. Now it's going to be taking place on March 1st and March 2nd. The blood drive will happen at the Woody Museum and you can find out how to register right now on KSAC.com. All right, Sarah Spivey, 48 degrees today. Happy so happy we are no longer dealing with these freezing conditions. Yes, and we actually just got an email from uh, our weather watcher up in Rock Springs, and they were finally able to restore power uh, to her location in Rock Springs. I don't know the condition of the rest of Rock Springs, but that is some good news there for our friends up in Rock Springs. Her personal power and water was restored. Now before the break, we were interviewing Mr. Puente about the aquifer, so I thought I would take a quick check of the level of the aquifer. The aquifer is up 1.3 feet in the last 24 hours. That is good news because the aquifer actually took a significant hit uh, because of pumping needs, uh, and that aquifer was at, at 660 three 662 feet and so it went down by 10 feet before rebounding uh, up today. This is the number that we're going to watch closely the 10 day average. Whenever the 10 day average drops below 660 feet, we usually go into stage one water restrictions. So we will uh, keep all of that up to date for you and keep that in mind as we uh, head throughout the rest of the week and see how uh, saws in the water recovers from uh, the power failure this past week. Right now outside those clouds are actually starting to thin which is good news uh, because we want to have a warm and sunny day it's still cloudy though at the airport 50 degrees south southwest winds at about 10 miles per hour uh, today we this morning we are starting off in the 50s in san antonio upper 40s down in southern bear county close to stinson uh, and 47 in pleasanton 48 at tarpley 51 in kerrville 50 in new Braunfels. one of the reasons why the hill country is warmer than those in southern bear county and to the point south is because because the hill country was locked into clouds overnight and those acted as a blanket and kept in the warmth. It's 52 in Fredericksburg, 45 in Carrizo Springs, and we are seeing visibilities improve. But look at this 24 hour temperature change. Yesterday morning we were in the 20s to start the day. Today some of us are in the 50s. In fact, this morning we did not see a freeze. That's the first morning we were without a freeze since February 12th. So positive changes here in the forecast as temperatures are 20 to 20. 25 degrees above where they were yesterday. Again, we do have some fog out toward Hondo visibility down to three, down to three in Carrizo Springs, down to five in Pleasanton, up down to six in New Braunfels and in Austin. And these clouds are already starting to thin out. So by lunch, we will have mostly sunny skies. Well, pardon me, we will have partly cloudy skies in San Antonio. Some clouds are going to hang on around Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and Uvalde. Uh, but this afternoon, because of the complete sunshine, we will have a very comfortable afternoon near 70 degrees around San Antonio and along that I 35 quarters, 75 toward Laredo, mid to upper 60s out toward Del Rio, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, and mid 60s up in the higher elevations near, near the hill country. So as I mentioned, cloudy through 10, starting to see skies clear by mid morning and into the afternoon. Uh, 62 at noon, 70 for that high temperature today. Southwest winds, breezy at times, 10 to 15, gusting up to 25, and then it'll be a pretty mild evening, only in the 50s by 10. And we do have a cool front on the way, but the key word here is it is a weak cold front. We are not going to have to deal with Arctic air, and I am grateful for that. So that weak cold front, here's how it sets up our forecast for tonight. It'll move through around midnight, and that'll allow for maybe a couple of sprinkles around San Antonio. Just some sprinkles at midnight with a lighter, uh, light rain possible out toward Houston. That'll move through. It will start off the day completely sunny, and overnight tonight, the only area that I'm really concerned about a freeze would be in northern parts of Kirk County near Rock Springs. For as a whole, those areas in the hill country are going to be in the mid 30s, but we may have temperatures dip briefly to freezing up there. Here in San Antonio, we'll be near 40, and tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day, sunny with a high temperature near 70 degrees. Looking at the forecast over the next seven days, a steady warm up to 74 on Wednesday, isolated rain possible on Thursday. That's it, only isolated. Thank you, Sarah. Well, it's 822 and 49 degrees. So what would you do if you saw plane parts falling from the sky all of a sudden? Well, that's exactly what happened to some people in Colorado. Still ahead, the reaction to this crazy situation. And Mayor Ron Nirenberg shows a small yet big act of kindness during a time of need. Details on his San Antonio special that people took part in this weekend. 
Welcome back. After many people here in San Antonio went through weather and utility chaos, Mayor Ron Nirenberg decided to spread a little joy. That's right. So he partnered up with Eat Migos and other restaurants around town to provide free tacos to people of San Antonio. The mayor made the announcement on social media yesterday, said he was offering uh, to pick up 1,000 lunch tabs for you know, 1,000 tacos. According to the mayor, each person was able to get two tacos, aka the San Antonio special, while supplies last. And Robert Puente, who we interviewed earlier, 1,001. So we now we're just waiting for someone to do 1,002. Sarah Costa. All right, 826 <laughs> and 49 degrees. Still ahead on our next half hour, tons of bottled of water distribution sites. They are set up around town. I believe 15 of them. Our Alicia Brera is live. We, she is going to explain how to partake. And the do's and don'ts when it comes to your plumbing. We're getting some common questions answered in a quick tutorial in the next half hour in our leading essay segment. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. Thank you so much for waking up with this on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's been a beautiful weekend so far. I saw so many people, you know, riding their bikes, taking their dogs on walks, just outside enjoying this I mean, it's usually we wouldn't call this warm in South Texas, but it is definitely <laughs> warm now. Sarah. Hey, this afternoon it'll be warm, definitely. And we're already starting to see skies clear from south to north around Bear County, around the KSAT 12 viewing area. I'll show you the time lapse here of this morning sunrise, and you can see very clearly on the horizon there is a nice dividing line between those that are cloudy and those that are experiencing the full sun right now. Those uh, clouds are pretty thin. They're going to burn off quickly, and we're going to be looking at a sunny sunny day, especially in the afternoon. Right now outside at the airport, we're reporting cloudy skies and 50 degrees, finally above freezing for the first morning since February 12th in San Antonio, even longer in parts of the hill country. 51 in Kerrville, 54 in Comfort, 48 in Tarpley, 52 in New Braunfels, 47 in Pleasanton. So in the day ahead, we're going to see skies clear in the afternoon. We'll be warm near 70 degrees with southwest winds gusting up to about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Sunday living up to its name. We're going to see plenty of sun today and in the week ahead, mixture of sunshine and we do have a couple of days in there where we have at least a chance for rain. So I'll have your forecast in just a few minutes. Sarah Max. Thank you, Sarah. We'll begin this half hour with the latest COVID-19 update for Bear County. Mayor Ron Nirenberg reported 107 new cases and seven deaths and as as of last check, 615 people remain in local hospitals, 232 are in the ICU, and 141 are on ventilators. And the WellMed COVID-19 vaccination clinics at the Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Center and the Alicia Trevino Lopez One Stop Center will resume appointments tomorrow. Now, patients scheduled to receive their second COVID-19 vaccine this week at these clinics should return next week to their assigned location on the same day of the week and same appointment time to receive their shot. Vaccinations are given by appointment only. No walk-ups will be accepted. VIA is offering free fares for its bus VIA Trans and VIA Link service today. The bus company is working to help those who need to get food and medicine and other essentials. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says 43 out of the 49 dialysis centers have now reopened around the city. And when we're talking about all the conditions that we've seen the last few weeks, dialysis patients really have had tough times. Water and electricity problems this week caused big problems for dialysis patients. STRAC, the Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, has been providing generators and water tankers to get centers around town back up and running. Unfortunately, this week came at a price for patients like Don Thomas. He was one of the many people who were several days overdue on their dialysis treatment. They were unable to get an ambulance to take him because of the slick roads. You'd call in the numbers that you've been given and all you get in is a runaround. And after finally make it to the dialysis clinic because she had taken on the dangerous roads, Don was able to get help, but the toxins in the blood were taking a toll as a result of the situations like this. The San Antonio Fire Department says they're now working with dialysis centers to bring them patients both the city and STRAC now urge patients to call 311 if you need transportation or you need help getting toll free numbers to set up clinic appointments. While grocery stores work to stock their shelves with water and others at home still dealing with some of those busted pipes, the city, county and food bank are teaming up to give bottled water to anyone in need. That's right. And with a high demand for water, organizers say they need volunteers as well. 
Lisa Barrett joining us live from the AT&T Center Distribution Point with more on what requirements volunteers must meet. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, the biggest requirement for volunteers is that you have to be willing to work because we know there's a huge demand. And one of the basic requirements, be able to lift at least 20 pounds. That's what we're seeing the Bear County Sheriff's deputies do today, uh, carrying that water to people's trunks, back seats, making it easy for people. And the big thing, volunteers, they're not going to be here all week. So that's why the city needs your help. There are shifts available beginning tomorrow, February 22nd until Friday, February 26th. And those shifts include uh, morning, 8 a.m. to noon. There's a midday shift from 11.30 to 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then the afternoon, 2.30 to 6. They are expecting a large demand. So this is why they need volunteers urgently across all distribution sites. And another, another thing to note, if you plan to volunteer, you'll be outdoors the entire shift. So we have a link on our website to register to volunteer. So where can you head to? You can choose from any of these locations on your screen. There's about 13 of them, uh, 16 at last count. Those include Texas A&M University, San Antonio Main Campus, SeaWorld, Our Lady of the Lake on the west side, Rolling Oaks Mall. The city of Converse also has a pickup point. And here, if you want to come to the AT&T Center, Keep in mind that it's gate G lot seven off AT&T Center Parkway. But of course, the big push today, volunteers, we need you. So go over to KSAT.com. We have a list of other distributions areas around the city, businesses included. But the big thing, that link so you can register to volunteer this week. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much, Alicia. And as she was talking about families, people in and around San Antonio now working to fix their homes after the last week's winter mess. So many people still dealing with busted pipes and a lot of plumbing issues. Joining us in today's Leading Essay segment is Brad Harrell, a master plumber. Good morning, Mr. Harrell. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I know you're extremely busy right now. Good morning. Yes, we're, we're working <clears throat> almost around the clock. We have to go home at some point go to bed. So we have been trying to get as much or a little sleep as possible. But anyway, how y'all doing today? We are doing well. So we're just going to start it off. What are some of the most common situations that you guys are dealing with? Uh, broken PVC, broken uh, split copper, split PEX piping is the most common issues what we're seeing. Um, and unfortunately with PVC, you cannot repair it with the uh, no hub solution that I gave the other day because it's just shattering. It, 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 it's obliterated. So you have to repair that with couplings or fittings and new pipe, unfortunately. Well, are there simple things that people should or shouldn't do if they're not able to get a plumber to their house in response to uh, their issues like some of these split pipes? So <clears throat> if, it's a, if it's a split copper or PEX pipe, you can get this uh, no hub and get a pair of scissors, cut it right down the middle, and then flip it over, wrap it around the pipe, and then you get your, no, uh, your uh, hose clamp and you get a flat blade screwdriver and you tighten it around there, put two, one on each side, and um, that should get you by to where you can at least turn the water on and off and use it for bathing, um, uh, flushing the toilet, you know, stuff like that, or cooking after you uh, sanitize it by boiling it. Let, let's go back a couple of steps here for people who have never dealt with this before. Right. Okay. First time homeowner, <laughs> trying to do this on yourself. So first steps first, how do people turn off their water? When do they do that? And then when are they in the clear to turn their water back on? I would say um, I would have already turned the water off because uh, more than, well, depending on how old the house is, what the construction of the house is, I, I would go ahead and shut the water off at the meter, um, then turn the water on, after everything has thawed by now and um, search for leaks. When you find the leak, um, go open the wall or if it's underneath the house, what have you, <clears throat> and then try to determine what the pipe is. Uh, copper or PEX, like I said, you can use this no hub uh, rubber repair and then you cut it, you wrap it around the pipe like that 
and then you you put a no hub clamp a uh, a hose clamp on either side of the rubber grommet um is that pretty good yeah that was great <laughs> Okay. That works for us. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people still looking for supplies right now. At, at this point, do people just have to be patient until those stores can get those basic, simple parts back on their shelves? Yeah, I've been told that uh, the big box, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, they're getting shipments uh, r as soon as possible. They, I think they got one yesterday. Um, and I know there's a line at the stores inside the store for the plumbing aisle you're just gonna have to be patient um wait in those lines see if they have what you need i would check multiple stores don't just go to one and give up uh and then ferguson and hughes moore morrison all those plumbing supply houses they are also uh getting shipments readily available uh and and you're just gonna have to be patient with them because us plumbers we've been going and getting parts you know to help as much people as we can too so all right brad thank you so much for joining us this morning thank you Mr. yes sir thank you all right time now is 841 50 degrees out just ahead busted for fake flakes why u.s customs and border protection agents confiscated a shipment of breakfast cereal and a terrifying situation for some plane passengers and people on the ground after the break, what people on board and at home had to say about falling plane parts. Taking a look at our skies, 50 degrees at 841 this morning. Sarah Spivey says things will warm up. We will see a minor cool front later this week. What that means, she'll explain when we come back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KZDeals.com. Are you slouching while you're watching today? There's an easy way to improve posture and ease back pain. As seen on Shark Tank, Better Back Lux Posture Support can help retrain your body's default posture in just 15 minutes a day. People usually sit about nine hours each day, so why not do it right? Made from NASA engineered memory foam for ultra sitting comfort. Slip resistant knee pads to help prevent sliding up when worn. Custom webbing straps to get the best ergonomic fit. It's easy, just wrap the back pad around your back, wrap the knee straps around your knees, adjust the straps to stack your spine in the perfect posture. Now it folds up into a compact carry case and the retail price for this is $59, but the case at deals price is $49.99. That is a 16% discount. Again, it comes with this nice little case and you can get this deal plus many more on caseatdeals.com. Well, good morning and welcome back in your morning headlines. Debris from an airplane fell onto Denver suburbs during an emergency landing this past weekend. One very large piece that appeared to be part of the engine narrowly, just barely missing a house. Fortunately, authorities said nobody aboard or on the ground was reported hurt. The Federal Aviation Administration said in a statement that the Boeing 777-200 returned to the Denver International Airport after experiencing a right engine failure shortly after takeoff. Flight 328 was flying from Denver to Honolulu when the incident occurred. Here's what some people who witnessed the scary scene had to say. All of a sudden there was a loud sound and then it got really, really bad. I thought lightning struck the plane at first. We uh, looked at each other, my wife and I, and held hands and just wished our kids would see them again. Initially, I think it was certainly panic, um, but I think people did a good job of calming down. United Airlines released a statement saying that there were a total of 231 passengers and 10 crew members on board. And a U.S. Customs drug dog alerted authorities to a shipment of breakfast cereal that was actually frosted with cocaine, not sugar. Federal authorities confiscated 44 pounds of cocaine that had been disguised as sugar on frosted cornflakes in Cincinnati. U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents say it had a street value of $2.8 million. The shipment originated in Peru and was en route to a private residence in Hong Kong before it was seized by U.S. authorities. 
And most people want their chance at the COVID-19 vaccine, but they are patiently waiting, unlike these two women from Florida. So according to the Orange County Sheriff's Office, the two women dressed up like grandmas to get the vaccine. Officers on the scene were not pleased when they saw the horrible disguise and they got a good talking to. To be clear, these women were not charged. They were only issued trespassing warnings. Okay. This is Strange a story there. Yeah. Morning. All right. Well, back here at home, already jumping up to 51 degrees out there, Sarah. Yeah, we had a low temperature today of 44 degrees, and that was at about 1:45 in the morning. With that being said, that breaks our streak at San Antonio International uh, Airport of mornings below freezing. Of course, it has been longer up in the hill country. But here's a look at those mornings below freezing. The ones that are in a box are also a freeze and a record. Of course, who can forget Monday morning? Tuesday morning, we were at 9 degrees and 12 degrees respectively. But again, with our morning low of 44 degrees, we have finally, finally seen that record, uh, that a streak rather, come to an end. Outside right now, we're already starting to see some skies clear. Look how thin these clouds are. They're going to be a punch through by that south central Texas sun soon. It is still cloudy, though, at the airport, 50 degrees at the airport with south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. All right, here's a look at the visible satellite, and you can see see that in parts of uh, Bear County, generally along Highway 90 and south, it's actually really sunny out there. We still have some lingering fog out near Hondo, uh, and we're starting to see the clouds break up in parts of the hill country as well. A wider view here, uh, Del Rio, Brackettville, Eagle Pass, still kind of locked into cloud cover. And as I'll take you through the future cast in a little bit, those areas will stay cloudier longer than us here in San Antonio. 50 degrees right now in San Antonio. This time yesterday, Yesterday, we were in the 20s and in the 30s, so we are well above that. Finally above freezing even in the mornings here. 52 in Kerrville, 52 in New Braunfels, 51 in Pleasanton, 46 in Creasa Springs, and 49 in Hondo. Here's the future cast that I was talking about. Most of us should have uh, partly to mostly clear skies today. Into the afternoon, we'll see mostly clear skies. And notice that that uh, low cloud cover does stick around Del Rio, Brackettville, a little bit longer than us in San Antonio. Afternoon, a sunny afternoon with a high temperature close to 70 degrees so right along that I-35 corridor, even warmer south or uh, more south toward Laredo, 75 degrees in Laredo, mid 60s to upper 60s for uh, parts of uh, the Rio Grande and also up into the hill country, 64 for the high in Kerrville. So again, just to walk you through today, at noon we'll be at 62, 2 p.m. we'll be at 68, 70 for that afternoon high. Yesterday we got up to 60 degrees. I actually went outside with the 60 degree weather without any sweater on for the first time in a long time just because we've been so acclimated to the cold. Today is actually going to feel pretty warm this afternoon since we've been dealing with all the cold weather. 55 degrees uh, at 10, so not even a cold evening. will be pretty mild this evening, but another cold front is coming through. This one, however, is going to be very weak, and the only thing you'll notice is a drop in humidity tomorrow because of that cool front. We could see an isolated shower east of San Antonio uh, late tonight as that front moves through, but look at that forecast. Looks pretty nice. We're going to be climbing up into the 70s by Wednesday, 70 four degrees and then we'll have isolated shower potentially an isolated storm on Thursday with the passage of our next week cool front Max and Sarah all right Sarah Spivey thank you so much 851 51 degrees out here's what's coming up this week on GMA the president's COVID plan, vaccines, schools, a return to normal. Now, in her first Sunday interview, Biden's press secretary and who's leading the Republicans. He visited the ex-president at Mar-a-Lago. And Sunday, he's here on ABC's This Week. And the news you need to know before you go, a woman behind bars this morning after San Antonio police tell us she led them on a brief chase. Then she crashed a stolen vehicle into someone's fence. Officers tell us it started in the 3500 block of Grant Avenue. It ended on West Wildwood when she was arrested. Police ran the license plate, found out that vehicle she was in was stolen. The woman now faces multiple charges, including evading arrest, possession of a stolen vehicle and a possible DWI.
We just got the pollen count in. Mold and mountain cedar are moderate. So as we thaw, those have gone up. Uh, ash and elm are present but are low. In the forecast today, we're going to be warm. 70 degrees for the high temperature. A weak cool front arrives tonight. Just making things a little bit drier and more pleasant tomorrow. Uh, chance for isolated rain on Thursday. But that's all we got in the forecast. Nothing crazy like a winter storm or Woo! anything like that. I'll take it. Thank, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Have a good day.